Hello and welcome back to the Stronger Than Steel podcast. Joining me today to discuss the NFC playoff picture, a recap of the Wild Card weekend, and looking ahead to the divisional round is Will Lester. Uh, before uh, we get started, I just wanted a quick recap of both games. In the early game on Saturday, the Seattle Seahawks defeated the Detroit Lions 26-6 to in a game that was pretty tightly contested throughout the early portion of the game with the Seahawks pulling away late in the fourth quarter with 16 points. Most of their production came on the ground from Thomas Rawls, who finished with 27 carries for 161 yards. The Lions did not manage as much uh, on their own side of the offense. And looking at the other game, the Green Bay Packers defeated the New York Giants by a score of 38-13, to also sort of pulling away later with 14 unanswered points in the fourth quarter. Uh, Will, what starting with the uh, game on Saturday, what did the Seahawks show you in this one, and what did the Lions show you on the other hand in this loss for them? Well, for me, the, first off, as a Lions fan, they showed me they have a lot of work to do. Um, they have talent. They can win. But it's, it especially showed in this past uh, Saturday's game that there's a lot of room to develop. Um, receivers have to grow a little more mentally. Um, and I think we have a really young offensive line that's, you know, only a few years away from really stepping it up. And um, essentially what really did them in this, this entire football game was their own mental error and the fact that they could not stop Thomas Wallace from running the ball. I mean, you're not going to beat the Seahawks if you let them run the table on a guy that wasn't even their leading rusher all year long. Um, so... I think Seattle just showed perseverance. They stuck with it long, and it, and it paid off. Eventually, they managed to put up more points as it goes, and they were counting on the Lions to make the mistakes, and that's exactly what happened. And um, it ultimately, it paid the price for Detroit. Good insight. Uh, looking at Sunday's game, then, uh, you watched it with me. Uh, what did you uh, see from the Packers that you liked? And uh, on the other hand, what did you see from the Giants that you didn't like? Well, for the Packers, it, it, it starts with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, the guy, you can't give him all day to play. I, the guy's going to show up, and especially the, as hot as he's been lately. The Giants had every ability to, to put that game in a position for them to win, and, they, and early going, they just couldn't get it in the end zone. Obviously, you have the, the drops with Odell Beckham and Sterling Shepard, but I also look at the the two or three opportunities they had where they were in Packer territory and they decided to punt the ball. Um, you get later on, you realize you're not scoring a whole lot. You need to take some of these opportunities and start going for it because you're not going to hold Aaron Rodgers to nothing all game long, is he? He's just too hot of a quarterback right now, and eventually, near the end of the second quarter, he showed that. He came through, they scored on drive, and then the Giants were like the Lions doomed by their own mistakes. You had the, obviously the Hail Mary that was poorly defended, and then in the second half with the Bob Greeny kick return that he decided to catch and take out at the four rather than let go out of bounds. Mental mistakes ultimately did them in, and um, I think it was also a little bit of play, poor play calling, excuse me. So, um, yeah, uh, the Packers definitely just outsmarted them and outlasted them. Okay. Uh, real quickly, just a couple more things from each uh, game. I'm going to be talking about the losers for both those wild card games. Going back to your team quickly, the Lions. They haven't won a playoff game since 1992, and to the casual NFL fan, watching that game kind of may have been the same old, same old. But uh, asking you as a Lion fan, is there any reason to believe that that could change in the next few uh, years, and why would that be the case if it does change or doesn't change? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they it was first year under a fresh GM coming from the New England franchise. Um, our first year GM, Bob Quinn, came in and um, right at around the end of last season. And since then, they, I mean, to be honest, they kind of overachieved this year. What I look at as a, as a point is 9-7, you know, all of, of all those nine games they won, eight of them were come from behind. So this team shows they have the, the perseverance and the, and the ability to put yourself in the state of mind and win ball games. And I think GM Bob Quinn showed with his draft just, just how capable he is of running the show. I mean, 
of his seven draft picks, I believe five or six of them ended up being just about an everyday starter for his team. Um, with In the first round, we took Taylor Decker, who, who was phenomenal this year. He started every snap for the team. And we had uh, Ashawn Robinson, who really came in as a decent defensive tackle and started seeing a lot of snaps. And Graham Glass now came in after an injury to Travis Stockton and really stepped up to the plate, in my opinion. So I think after a really strong rookie class, really underrated rookie class, I think we'll see more of those to come from him. And eventually we'll start seeing this mesh together, especially if he can um, find a way to get players to mesh with Caldwell's system with Jim Bob Cooter's offensive scheme and Terrell Austin's defensive scheme if he manages to stay as coach here. But uh, I think although Lions fans are obviously embarrassed and disappointed by the performance this past Saturday, I think they have to look nowhere but up because we, we really did greater than a lot of people expected us to do this year. And there were a lot of strong points for us to look forward to going into next year. Okay. Uh, looking at the uh, other uh, NFC team that uh, failed to advance, the New York Giants, what were your thoughts on the uh, Odom, Odell Beckham Jr. situation, uh, both what happened in the week leading up to the game and whether about how people are seem to be making a big deal about his trip to Miami and what happened after the game where he uh, reportedly punched a uh, wall in the locker room? What uh, I guess what do you think about all that? have all the talent in the world, especially defensively. And when I see Odell Beckham, you, you see the face of the NFL. You know, a lot of people, you mentioned the NFL, a lot of their first thought is Odell Beckham. And um, as far as the Miami thing, I don't think that has any correlation to his performance on the field on um, Sunday. However, I do feel like it was not a smart choice to go out there because you just it just created the distraction for the whole team. And you can't tell me that they had a harder time focusing on the game or on their preparation for the week because they're constantly being berated with questions about this really obscure and random trip to Miami on their day off. So although, obviously, he had a couple of drop passes and his performance really wasn't up to snuff, I feel like he just needs to get himself in a better mental state to play the game on a week-to-week basis, especially in big-time games when he plays in the playoffs for the first time or when you see him going up against big-time corners like Josh Norman, you kind of see it, he's easily to get under his skin. And he just needs to grow up a little bit. I mean, the punching of the wall, I mean, come on, that's, that's high school. You need, to, you need to act like a professional. You know, you lost fair and square in that game. You, you have no one to blame but yourself for that poor performance. So I, I see no excuse for the punching of the wall. I don't feel sorry for him for getting berated for all these Miami questions, but I don't think it's related to his performance. I think everything put together, just mentally, he was not in the state of mind to perform at his top, at his top level there in the playoff game, against the, especially against the tough team like the Packers. You know, you got to be all there for that game. I agree with you on that. Um, so looking forward now to the NFC Divisional round. You've got uh, two rematches. You have the Green Bay Packers at the Dallas Cowboys, and you have the Seattle Seahawks at the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, In uh, the uh, the earlier games this year, the Cowboys defeated the Packers 30-6, and the Seahawks beat the Falcons 26-24. You want to take some time to explain, uh, I guess, your thoughts on both of these rematches and uh, who you think is going to win and why? I mean, this will be the best pair of games I think you'll see you know, in the playoffs this year, aside from possibly the Super Bowl. I mean, obviously, you got that thinker across the way with the Patriots and Texans and an interesting matchup with your Steelers and the Chiefs. But the one game I really look at with a lot of intent and a lot of intrigue is the Packers and Cowboys. The Cowboys are just excelling on every level offensively between the offensive line, Ezekiel Elliott and Dak Prescott, both stepping up as rookies and really taking this franchise beyond what everyone thought, you know, they would for Jerry Jones. And then, of course, you have the Red Hot Packers with Rodgers, you know. Can they contain him, which I don't think they can. And um, for for the first time, you know, I think since AT&T Stadium was built, I think you're going to see the most energized crowd for the Dallas Cowboys because they've struggled at home the past few years. And then coming into this year, they finally have something to root for. They have a really great team with a really powerful offense and, two young rookies that are going to keep this team relevant for many years if the defense can hold up. So 
I think that's the most important game to watch this week. And then with the Falcons and Seahawks, a lot of the intrigue there is, is the two offenses, I think. You have the Seahawks coming off one of their best rushing days in almost all season with Thomas Rawl just lighting it up. And then the Falcons with Matt Ryan, who, in my opinion, is MVP this season. And that running game they have with Julio Jones and, um, excuse me, with Kevin Coleman and Devontae Freeman, and then you have Julio Jones as receiver. I think that's just going to be a full-on shootout. It's going to be fun to watch. Um, and I think the winner of that game is going to have a tough matchup coming up next week. But uh, as far as the winners, I, I think Green Bay goes in there. and uh, It's going to be a close one, but I think Green Bay goes in there and gets the win with Ray Hot Rodgers. Um, you're a little worried with Jordy Nelson being out this week, but I still think you know this team is red hot. They're they're playing the ball well, and I still think they're going to Dallas and uh, give the upset. And as far as the other side, I think the Falcons um, outlast the Seahawks with Russell Wilson and Tom Swalls, making for an interesting uh, last game in the Georgia Dome between the Falcons and the Packers, in my opinion. Absolutely. Uh, last question before we wrap up here. Uh, in your opinion, uh, which team is the best and or most dangerous teams in the uh, left in the NFC? And uh, that could be the same answer or, like, different answers. They could be different teams. It could be, like, which team is more dangerous? This team is the best, though. Or they could both be the same team, in your opinion. So knowing knowing that based on the way I explained it to you, who do you think is the most dangerous team and or the best team? I think the most dangerous team, obviously, right now is the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers is just red hot and he's firing on all levels and even the top notch defense of the Giants couldn't hold him down for four quarters. So I think you're gonna have a really hard time, you know, just walking through against Green Bay and moving on. And I think the best team overall right now is Dallas between the offense they're just the offensive line is just so stacked that it opens up for Ezekiel Elliott to run all day. That Prescott played really well and they have a good receiving court, so that, again, that's why I think, in my opinion, that matchup's easily the best one to watch all weekend because both of those teams are just they're playing so well all season long, coming into, or even all season long, but coming into this week, they're both playing really well. Hmm. Well, that, it's uh, certainly shaping up to be quite an exciting divisional playoff round, and as, uh, as you mentioned, I agree with you. we got the best games coming up on the NFC side. Certainly looking forward to it. Um, if there's anything else you wanted to add quickly before we wrap things up, Will, uh, I think we're all set here. Is there anything you wanted to say quickly? Um, you know, on the AFC side, I think, obviously, the Steelers and the Chiefs is a really good game. Best of luck to your Steeler Nation. You got a big game coming up, going into Arrowhead, the loudest place in the world. It's going to be a fun one, I think. You guys are going to have your hands full, but it's going to be interesting to see how they all perform coming off a big win against Miami the way they ran the ball. Le'Veon Bell is playing top football right now, and Roethlisberger, obviously everyone's worried about the foot, but I think he'll be just fine, and he's going to perform about as well as anybody. So I think it'll be a fun game to watch as well. Well, thank you for that. And, uh, yeah, he's he was reportedly out of the walking boot, so uh, obviously his uh, – uh, status is going to be monitored, but his performance on the road has been a lot worse than at home this year, so I think it's definitely going to be a lot better of a game than the one that was played in Pittsburgh against the Dolphins this past Sunday, but in any case, playoff football is my favorite time of year, and I'm looking forward to seeing some more games. Uh, Will, thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. Best luck to you guys. Thank you.